Now, macroeconomics, we have gone over all of this. We're going to very definitely look at all of this. Now, one of the things that we won't talk very much about, okay, and the reason is that this tends to be more of a microeconomic question than it tends to be a mac ma macro as opposed to micro. So income distribution has microeconomic consequences but tends to be more of a macroeconomic issue than a micro. And certainly not under the control of the firm or even groups of firms in an industry. So unfortunately this is one of the things that when we move into a new market or part of a region or something like that, we take that into consideration. Now I will tell you, okay, think about this very definitely. What I do look at in terms of uh, the consulting work that I do uh, when we're looking at growth, you know, you do take into account as you think about moving into a new market type. So think about Walmart in, in the United States, which is a low price leader, and then Target, which tends to set itself at a higher uh, end of the market than Walmart does, the income distribution in a region would be much lower and that would be acceptable to Walmart for Region A. That income distribution in Region A, fine for Walmart, would not be fine for the company Target because Target is a more upscale market. So in the sense of income distribution, we certainly do pay attention to that, but that all has a lot to do with the demandability of our customers. Macroeconomics, we're really not going to have much to say about it, okay? So that these, these matter, but generally as a company, you have no control over uh, any of those issues, okay? Not that they're unimportant. Now, re really what was sort of interesting, and this got to be, well, I did a quick aside here, uh, got to be in, at Coors in terms of uh, we were doing macroeconomic forecasting on a monthly basis at Coors, and finally the board of directors basically said, look, the macro economy doesn't affect us that much. Monetary policy, trade among nations, unemployment don't affect people's decisions to buy beer enough to where we ought to spend a lot of corporate resources forecasting those. Kind of interesting if you think about it. So we thought management wanted to know about macroeconomics. What we realized is they said, look, we can read about the macro economy in the Wall Street Journal or we can take a look at it on the evening news forecast. But in terms of how do we acquire a competitive position in a new market or sustain our competitive position, how do we look at competing against another uh, a brewer in Southern California, the macro economy has nothing to do with it. Please spend your time worrying about micro <laughs> issues and not worrying about macro. Now, I will say one thing just quickly, though. This one right here, OK? Um, we bought hops. Hops is a, is, is a plant that's used in beer production. We bought that hops in the German market, okay? And therefore trade, both, both so the exchange rates and hedging against uh, changes in those days, it was the Deutschmark, not the Euro, the Deutschmark dollar exchange rate. We were involved in that issue, but that, not trying to control it, just trying to maintain our cash position. And remember, we would buy hops, Okay, and the question is, do we pay for it when we buy it or do we pay for it on delivery? As you well know in, in, in those kinds of markets, it depends on what you think is going to happen to the exchange rate. If you think the dollar is going to appreciate against a foreign currency, then you want to pay on delivery, not on purchase. If you think we're going to depreciate against a foreign currency, then you want to pay on purchase, not on delivery. So we did get involved in that issue uh, at Coors. Okay. It might be my finger's not good enough. Let me come over here and click here. Okay, resources, important, uh, land, labor, and capital, okay? And then entrepreneurship. Uh, again, typically economists don't pay attention to that, uh, but uh, managerial economists do, do. Now, I do want to say something at this point here, just very briefly, and we will come back to it from time to time. I make a very big difference because of my years in the corporate sector of management and entrepreneurship. Uh, an entrepreneur is different than a manager. Managers are very important, but managers are about command and control. Entrepreneurs are about risk taking. And in my experience in 11 years in corporations and still working with corporations over the last 20 years as a consultant around the world, my experience is that the better you are at a manager, the worse you are as being an entrepreneur. The better you are at being an entrepreneur, the worse you are at being a manager. That's my experience. You need both, 
but almost always the reason small companies end up getting into trouble or not succeeding is that the, it is, they are almost always started by an entrepreneur who is a terrible manager. So one of the things that's extremely important if you're the entrepreneur getting ready to start a business, then keep entrepreneuring and get yourself a good manager and the both of you work together. It's not that one is better than the other, but generally trying to do both will be a recipe for, uh, for disaster. Okay, my opinion. Ah, uh, again, economic terms that I think are important. I don't know what this means. Uh, I, I realize what this says, but in a country as wealthy as the United States, it's not absolute scarcity, it's relative scarcity. But I think one of the most powerful ideas in economics is right here, okay? Opportunity and cost. So what I'm economist, as an economist, what I'm uh, fired up about is choice, but what I'm fired up about is what are the costs of it? So let's just, let's just hit this right now. It's what sacrifice. So if you're sitting there with a, a beverage and in, in listening to this lecture with a beverage that you bought, the question is what did it cost you? And almost all of you will say, oh, 10 yuan or something, or 5 yuan. Well, that's not true because what you did is if it cost 5 yuan, you gave up 5 yuan and you got in return whatever that beverage is or whatever it is you're eating or whatever piece of paper or whatever you're writing on. So clearly it didn't cost you that. You just made a trade. You're, no, you're better off, in fact, for the trade. What did it cost? Take a look. It cost right here. Okay. Sacrifice. So now come back with our personal behavior. This is in extremely important because it's how the economist looks at the world. I'm going to make decisions to minimize my sacrifices. Got it? I'm going to minimize my sacrifices. So if this is during the summer now, or right in the early months, and you're in uh, Canton, which is, I, uh, I, I can, I, well, the reason I say Canton is I have a hard time saying the new name. But let's say Hong Kong, or you're in Xi'an, or Guilin. Let's, Guilin's a better example. You're in Guilin, and it's a beautiful day, and you're thinking about going down the Li River just for fun. Or sitting here uh, listening to the rest of this lecture. Clearly, you're going to have to sacrifice more on a beautiful day uh, taking uh, and getting a small boat and getting out on the Lee River and going down the Lee River so your opportunity costs have gone up. If, in fact, you were taking this during the wintertime and it's a poor day, very cloudy, rainy, chilly, then your opportunity costs have gone down. But this is what you need to understand about your customers. They want to minimize the sacrifices they have to make. They don't want to maximize them, okay? We'll come back to this from time to time. Let me see if I can get it to do it. Okay, nope, so I'll come over here. I must have cold hands, sorry. All right, now, location decisions. This is important. What should be produced? How should we produce it and for whom? That's macroeconomics, but it's also at the company level. You should always be thinking what should we produce should we produce it and for whom we should produce this thing, okay? Uh, nationally or um, at the corporate level. Now, what's interesting here is that in the United States, the answer to these four questions is, of course, supply and demand, something we call the marketplace. And by the way, uh, you use supply and demand in the marketplace uh, in, um, in China too. Every country does. Uh, one of the things I love about going to Beijing is you can just go south of, uh, uh, I think many of you may have been there, south of Tiananmen Square. There's this wonderful street markets and street vendors there. And I love going down there because you can barter with them, supply and uh, demand. So I enjoy that as an economist. Eric, one of the first places I go every time I go to Beijing is to go down to that uh, area south of Tiananmen Square. And I just, my wife says, you just can't wait to get down there, can you? I said, no, because it's economics at work. It's supply and demand. They have information about the price, but I have desire, I have income, and now it's the sort of exchange going back and 